Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Good morning, Doc. Chester. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Come and have some coffee with us, Matt. You've got nothing to do in your office. <laughs> no, but in there, people can't see me doing it. Oh, it's no use to hide. They're on to you anyway. You know, I don't think the Christmas season has made you any more charitable at all, has it, Doc? Well, I'm not a man to be good on Sunday and sin all week, if that's what you mean. Well, you're honest, if nothing else. Oh, I don't know. Hey. Look at that fellow. Yeah, what fellow is uh, Yonder, across the street there, in, in the coonskin hat. Oh. Now, that's the tallest man I ever saw. And that rifle he's carrying is as long as he is. <laughs> he sure looks out of place in Dodge, don't he? He is out of place, Chester. That's a squirrel-hunting southern mountain man. He's coming over here. Look at him walk. Yeah. If everybody had legs like that, the Santa Fe Railroad would go out of business. <laughs> Oh, oh, my, he's from the hills, all right. Well, at least he ain't another gunman, Mr. Dillon. That's something to be thankful for. Howdy. Hello. Which of you be the, what do you call him? Uh, you mean the marshal? That's the word. I never heard it till a fellow told me this morning. <laughs> well, that just means peace officer. I'm again peace officers. Uh huh. It ain't fitting for some folk to be meddling in other folks' business. Where do they figure it like that, stranger? Uh, Ozark Mountains? Better country than this. My name's Eben Hakes. Well, my name is Dillon. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot and Doc Adams. Uh, how how are you? Do? Peace officer, the man said you'd help me find where that Joth Monger is living. Joth Monger? Yeah, he come out here about a year ago. He's got an old mountain gal with him. They're married. Uh, yeah, they got a place up near Rock Springs, about, uh, oh, ten miles north of here. I'll find it. Uh, you've come a long way to see your friend, Hicks. Josh Monger ain't exactly a friend, peace officer. But I gotta get going, it being Saturday and all. Well, what Saturday got to do with it? Nothing. Except I won't kill no man of a Sunday. I never have. I never will. <laughs> People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette ever could be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste, and Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most.
Duff Munger's face don't look no better than it ever did, does it? No, not much, Chester. No, oh, look at that for Miss Munger. Out doing chores as usual. I wonder where Joff is. Asleep somewhere, probably. Morning, Miss Munger. Howdy. How are you, ma'am? Poorly. Uh, is Joff here, ma'am? If today wasn't Saturday, he'd be here. What? Joff goes to Dodge every Saturday. He does? I never see him. Now, if he socialized more, you'd see him. Just got his ways, Marshal. They're lonesome, but they're his. And... I see. Uh, Miss Monger, do you know a man called Eben Hakes? Hakes? If you speak that name round here, you won't be welcome, Marshal. Well, there's trouble between you? If you call Joff being the only Monger left and Eben being the only Hakes left, then you could say there's trouble. Oh, you mean it's a feud, huh? Both families been whittled down to just them two. I see. Is that why Joth came out to Kansas, to uh, get away from it? Not if he's always talking about going back long enough to kill even Hakes. Yeah. Well, what do you think, ma'am? Don't you think it's gone far enough? Either one of them could call it off if he wants so muley. Uh, how did this feud start, ma'am? If you had any upbringing, you wouldn't ask. Oh, it's I'm a sorry. family matter. Mm-hmm. Where'd you see even Hakes anyway? Well, he was in Dodge asking about Joth. Uh, if he was asking, then he'll find him, and that's bad. Joth don't even know he's around. Well, that's why I came out here. Joth knew about him. I wouldn't worry. Joth's a better shot than even Hakes any day. Look, Miss Monger, the law doesn't hold with feuding. Whichever one kills the other, he'll hang for it. You start meddling, they'll shoot you. But I'm worried about Joff. He'll be drunk as soon as it's dark. Well, I'll find him, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is all hill people like that, Mr. Dillon? Oh, they're mighty independent, Chester. Well, the law sure don't seem to mean much to them. Yeah, not when it comes to feuding. Mm. Now, look over there. Hmm? That little bluff there. Well, for, now, how did he get here? I don't see no horse. Well, let's go ask him. Hello, Hicks. Is that Joss Monger's place yonder, peace officer? Yeah. Good. I'll get a little closer and shoot him when he comes out. You don't care whether you hang or not, do you? Hang? For shooting the monger? For shooting anybody. Do you ever hear a murder? Peace officer, you're getting downright contrary. Where's your horse, Hicks? I got no horse. Well, you left him in Dodge? I don't need no horse to travel by. You mean you walked all the way from the Ozarks? It's mostly downhill, peace officer. But I'd walk anywhere to get me monger. Well, maybe I ought to throw you in jail. Now you are being meddlesome. I got to get closer to that house. And don't you fret none about the old lady. I don't aim to shoot her. Mr. Dillon, you gonna let Hakes wait here and shoot Joff? No, let him go, Chester. Let's get back to Dodge. And we'll find Joff and warn him. Why don't you just let them shoot each other and have done with it? <laughs> don't tempt me, Chester. <laughs> Chester, you go ask Sam if he's seen Chaff, huh? Okay. Evening, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Where you been? It's pretty near midnight. I've been trying to stop a feud. Well, it's a long time since I've heard of a feud around Dodge. Now, this one kind of got transplanted from the Ozarks. The Ozarks? Yeah. <laughs> the wonder that crazy Joth monger isn't mixed up in it. Now, that's Joth I'm looking for. You are? I've been in every saloon in Dodge. You must have a cave somewhere. I'll bet you a dollar he's right out back, Matt. Out back? Sure. He's there every Saturday night. Comes in and buys a bottle of corn from Sam and takes it out back and drinks it. Sits there all along with his long rifle in one hand and his bottle in the other. Nobody knows what he's thinking. Yeah, no wonder I haven't seen him around. Hey, oh. Mr. Dillon, Sam's... Oh, oh, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Yeah, Kitty just told me, Chester. 
Go out back and see if he's there. If he is, bring him in, huh? All right. Well, who's Joth feuding with, Matt? man called Eben Hakes, Kitty. Is Eben the Ozarks, too? Yeah, he arrived today on foot. On foot? Yeah, he's all legs. <laughs> Real traveling man. Hey, I'd like to see him. He's got a face like a hatchet, and he's built like a piece of wire. Oh, I'll bet he carries a long rifle, too. He does. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. I made him leave his rifle with Sam. Hello, Jeff. You just up and say what you want, Marshal, because I don't care to be cooped up inside here very long. Eben Hakes is looking for you, Jeff. Of course he is. Mongers and the Hakes been looking for each other nine to forty years. They most all got found, too. You been drinking, Jeff? Well, the missus won't allow no drinking on the place, Marshal, so I got to come to town every Saturday. Joss Monger. It's Hakes, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, get out of the way, Kitty. Sure will. I got you caught like a bar up a tree, Joss. Put your rifle down, Hakes. You're going to kill me. I ain't even got no gun. Put it down, I said. You're standing in the way, peace officer. And I'm going to stay here. Then I'll have to shoot you first. You're not going to shoot anybody. Of course I am. That's what I come for, ain't it? Don't try it. Now, here, w- wait a minute, everybody. I just thought of something. I wished all you folks had stop meddling in it's this. It's after midnight, Hicks. What? It's Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, he's right, Hicks. Well, of all the gall blame luck. Oh, quit looking so troubled, Josh. I won't shoot no man of a Sunday, even a monger. But you come awful close to it, Eden. It's a doggone shame it took me so long to find you today. You traveled a long way, Eden. I know, but I got tired waiting for you to come on back home, Josh. I was coming. I was coming this summer. I know, but your old lady told me about it today. I seen her scratching around doing chores. That ain't much of a place you got there, Josh. Be quiet, Chester. Oh, fella can make a crop here sometimes, Eden. But it's a hard fight with a short stick. I didn't see no hogs out there. Where's your hogs, Josh? I'm getting some come spring. Eden, how's things back home? Well, there's been a lot of changes since you left. Eden? Yeah? I got a little jug out back. It's most empty now, but we could maybe buy another one set out there for a spell, kind of get soured on the cob. What say, Eden? Might as well. We can't do no shooting till Monday. Where at do we buy this jug? I'll show you. Fell over here, so... You'll have to lend me some money. I didn't bring none with me. Well, if they don't be... Oh, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Looks to me like they're going to call that feud off. No, not them, Chester. Midnight tomorrow, they'll be stalking each other all over again. Well, how are you going to stop them? Hell, I'll let them enjoy themselves tonight. But tomorrow, I'm going to throw them both in jail. And they're going to stay there till they learn something more than feuding. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette ever could be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste. And Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure by Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. I wasn't sure that jail would teach Joth and even a thing, but I still couldn't let them run loose and shoot each other down. So the next morning, Chester and I went looking for him. 
We found where they'd built a small fire out back of the Long Branch. And we found a number of empty bottles. But that was all. We searched the town till noon with no luck. Then I decided to ride out to the Monger place and see if by any chance Joth had returned. There was nobody in sight when we got there. So we dismounted and walked up to the door. There's smoke coming out of the chimney, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that doesn't mean Joth's here, Chester. Well, no, sir. Afternoon. You go away, Marshal. Now, wait a minute, Miss Monger. If you don't want to get shot, you do what I say. Friendly, ain't she? Yeah. But she didn't have no gun. It must be Joth in there. Yeah, probably. Well, if it is, why would he want to shoot you? Well, there's one reason I can think of. You mean he's gone and killed Eben Hakes? I don't know, Chester. But I'm sure going to find out. They ain't going to open it. Uh, oh, there's a window around the side. It ain't a very clean window. That'll do. Here, let me take a look. I'll, uh, I'll be... What is it, Mr. Jones? Here, have a look yourself. All right. Well, well they're eating dinner. All three of them. Yeah. Come on. I want to talk to the men, Ms. Munger, and I'm coming in. Josh? All right, stay away from those rifles. Why, he busted in. He busted in right past the woman. I never heard of a man coming into another man's house that way. If he had any upbringing, he wouldn't have. Is this the kind of people they got in Kansas, Josh? It's the first I seen of. Never mind about that, Josh. Now, why did your wife threaten to shoot me? What's going on here? If you hadn't come to put them in jail, you wouldn't get shot, Marshal. How did you know I was going to put them in jail? Eden says you told him you was. Well, that's right, I did. If he killed anybody. I ain't killed nobody. The feud's off. We stopped it. You stopped it? Sure. Last night, we got to talking a little about old times and everything. And you know what we found out? No, what? You tell him. Well, peace officer, this here feud started a long time ago. What happened was my grandfather stole Joss' grandfather's girl and married up with her. So Joss' grandfather declared a feud right then and there. But you ain't told him what we found out yet, Eden. Oh, well, we hadn't thought of it before, peace officer, but last night we was thinking that if my grandfather hadn't done that, then Joss here would have been me. What? Don't you see? Otherwise, my grandmother would have married up with Joss' grandfather, and I'd have been Joss. So any way you look at it, we're kind of related, like? Any way you looked at it last night, you mean I saw them bother? <sighs> no, it doesn't matter, Chester, as long as the feud is off. It ain't only off. Eden's going to stay on here with us. We're going to work this place together. I'm going to give him a share in it come Christmas. Come Christmas? It ain't far off. January 6th. Now, here, wait a minute. Since when did Christmas get to be January 6th? If you knew anything, you'd know that. I swear I'm getting to know less and less, ma'am. No, you folks don't understand. Back in the Ozarks, we do our Christmas celebrating 12 days from when you do. Wait a minute, you're talking about 12th night. We call it Christmas, too. And if you only knew, Marshal, it works just fine for us. <laughs> Well, there's no reason why it shouldn't, ma'am. It's an old custom. Say, maybe you and Chester would come out and celebrate with us. If they don't mind kraut and sour pickles and cornbread and coffee, they'll come. Now, ain't there going to be no chitlins, woman? I was keeping them for a surprise. <laughs> chitlins or no chitlins, I'll be proud to come, Miss Monger. And me, too. Well, uh, we'll leave you to your dinner now, and... Uh... <laughs> We'll see you at Twelfth Night. And 
now our star, William Conrad. Friends, at this time, I'd like to join with Ligon and Myers, the makers of Chesterfield and l m Filters. There are over 6,000 wholesale distributors and the 1,300,000 retail cigarette dealers. And wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. On the frontier, violent death might come to a man in a number of ways. And life around him served as a daily reminder. Gunfighting in the street, stampeding cattle, marauding Indians, hunger, thirst. Now, there were a lot of ways to die, and most of them hard. But the Westerner wasn't bothered by that. The important thing was, when his time came, that, well, that he'd die standing up and in fine style. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Helen Klebe, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Most accidents aren't really accidental at all. Only you can cause an accident. That's right. It's up to you to read and heed the safety signs, to keep your eyes on the road, to watch out for those curves ahead and the cars driving along near you. Most drivers know how to operate a car. They know the traffic rules. They know that speeding, taking chances, failing to keep to the right of the line are dangerous hazards. Accidents happen because drivers do these things despite what they know. So while you are driving... Remember that you and only you are responsible for your life and the lives of those driving with you. Drive carefully. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. L and M America's best filter tip cigarette. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.